all players want to get fitter, faster, stronger. The technology that we are bringing out within the next couple of years is going to change the way that sports science is used. It's been, you know, sports scientists, coaches and athletes wanting to get a competitive edge to know more about what they're doing. Rugby League has been really good at embracing that technology. So you see all 16 clubs have now taken up micro-technology devices and are really using that on a day-to-day -day basis. Right side, Monster The process starts with James, a PhD scholar, who uh, places the units within the players and collects the data of course, and then provides an interpretation and we provide that to the coaches. Uh, it gives you a lot of specific data on your training. Without those GPS units, it's more a guess of how physically you've gone in those certain drills. Microtechnology devices have two aspects to them, so the first side is locational based. This is from the GPS and provides us information on where the athlete is. So GPS collects at uh, 15 hertz, so 15 samples per second. Uh, the position of the players, the velocity of the players. So from that we can derive uh, acceleration. The second side is an inertial sensor. GPS units also include uh, triaxial accelerometers. So they measure acceleration in the, in the three planes. Uh, gyros, they measure the rotation of the unit. And this allows us to look at those smaller movements that GPS is not able to pick up. So things such as your collisions or your impacts with another player. There's a fair Kiwi contingent in the match tonight and there's a, a run straight away, Moa into... Proctor. Tackles really are the, the lifeblood of, of the fantasy player. Like guys like Corey Parker and Paul Gallen and in the old days, you know, Nathan Hindmarsh, you just sit there tackling all day. That, they're the guys that you want on your team. Bragging rights are pretty important in, in fantasy, especially when you're, you're in a draft comp with a few of your mates. You, you're not really going to win this, the fantasy game without any sort of statistical analysis at all. I think the last few years have really started seeing the, the takeoff of, of big data in, in sport. I think the coaches just, they've got access to so much now, they can just plan every minute really of the players' lives. The primary focus in rugby league is looking at the acceleration and deceleration that occurs. The players are constantly changing their velocity. Looking at that data, we do what we call a, a rolling average where we go through and pick out the peaks that occur in the game and establish basically the maximum for individual players. We do that for all the players and all the positions and we get a profile of each position in rugby league, what the peak intensities that occur in competition. We use that as a guide to then say, okay, Okay, well in training, they're the intensities we need to see if we want the players to be training at game pace. By quantifying all those training loads, that might actually help to say, well over a duration of a year, has a player done too much? We can monitor that and that might help get a few more years out of players as they get older. You know, get online. The amount of data available makes it a lot easier to be connected, especially from a fantasy point of view. Like in the old days, if you were playing fantasy, you just really have nothing to go on but your gut. But now you can sit there, you can do the spreadsheets, and the only limit is how much time and effort you can put into getting your data around. Because anything you want to know, it's it's out there. For the players themselves, the information they get, often players will just look at all oh, how much distance did I cover. That's the important metric that they want to see. How far did I run? Some players are really interested in it and after each session or game they'll go to our performance staff and, and they'll look at their figures and they'll see how much uh, ground they've covered or what speeds uh, they've travelled in the game. Other players don't, don't want to know about it, they, they know whether they've played well or whether they've had a poor game. Everyone's going down the path of collecting a lot of data. I think one of the biggest challenges with all the GPS information we're getting is the coaches can become a bit overwhelmed with, with the sheer volume of data, the number of metrics we can look at. And I'm really big on almost data reduction. The amount of data or metrics that you take to coaches, you need to be considered in how much you take them. If you were to take into account all the metrics that you're provided with from a GPS company, it would be about 30. You've got to work out what's, what's relevant, what's most important, and, and stick to that. Any information is definitely helpful. Obviously, there's, there's probably a balance with 
what you see and the numbers that you get. Usually you'll find they, they match up, you'll see something happening on the field and then it, it might be some recognition or in, through numbers of what you're seeing. There always needs to be a balance between the art and the science of, within sport. And so the human side of it is still going to be there, but the data and technology does help. The most exciting new development for Catapult is Clear Sky uh, that allows us to track indoors and get accurate uh, positional data within stadiums. The integration of uh, game stats um, with GPS and video I think will be very useful. I can't see the game getting any slower. I see players getting faster and the game getting faster so I think that's exciting for everyone involved and that's what everyone wants to see and obviously GPS technology is at the forefront of that as well, that's what's really driving it.